guys, Will here with WTF Car Reviews and today we're going to be reviewing the 2024 Nissan Pathfinder Platinum. And a big thanks to Red at Courtesy Nissan in Tampa, Florida for helping make this review possible. I'll leave a link to your inventory below and if you're looking for a new car, SUV, or truck in the Tampa area, I would definitely recommend checking these guys out and ask for Red. And for those of you guys who don't know, the Pathfinder started off as Nissan's compact SUV back in 1985. Moving up to the midsize SUV segment in 1995, lasting two generations all the way to 2012. For the fourth generation released in 2013, the Pathfinder switched to a mid-size unibody crossover platform, and the same applies to the fifth generation you see here. Released a couple years ago back in 2022, and for 2024, the Pathfinder is available in five trims, ranging from the $35,000 base S all the way up to the $48,000 Platinum we have here. What else do we get for that money? Let's jump right in. So up front, we get full LED headlamps, LED daytime running strip right up top too. No fog light, but really not a big deal. We get the V-Motion grille. It's got a reflective chrome design with black inserts. Updated Nissan badge with white lettering and a forward-facing camera underneath. We get a 360 here too for the top platinum trim, full front parking sensing, and a beautiful white metallic paint color. And it pops like crazy with this two-tone contrast. It's about 850 bucks for the paint color with the contrast, but it is a definite killer look compared to most of the other SUVs in this segment, making it look a lot less boring than just your regular soccer mom three row SUV. The a little bit of black trim for the wheel well area, 20 inch rims, they are silver and black contrasted wrapped in Bridgestone Alenza all season tires. The dimensions being 255, 50 R20. So the 50 series sidewall, the ride quality should be excellent. And we'll see if the 255 wide tires are enough to put the power to the ground. We get about 284 horsepower, 269 pound-feet of torque, I believe. So we'll see if that's enough tire for the front wheel drive Pathfinder. I like the black contrast of mirrors, LED turn signal on it, an additional camera on the mirror to help us out with the 360. We get black trim for the top part of the window trim. I just really wish they added black trim for the bottom too. And I also wish they blacked out that Pathfinder down below. Same with the door handles. They should have added some more black accents with this two-tone paint, but I understand why they did it. The two-tone paint is literally just a two-tone paint. It doesn't include any black accents or a midnight package for the handles and the trim pieces. Anyway though, the glass for the mirror takes up the entire frame. We get blind spot monitoring on the glass, blacked out B pillar and a white C pillar. I wish that was all blacked out too for a nice flush look. But other than that, this is a killer looking SUV with a two-tone contrast. Same rear wheel and tire setup. The only difference is a smaller brake caliper. The gas cap is pushed to open with easy fill and I believe you could throw 87 octane fuel here for this 3.5 liter V6. I like the mud flaps too, keeping this SUV protected if you take it through some rocky trails. Full LED taillights, the turn signal appears to be halogen but the reverse light looks to be also LED. The rear styling is also killer. I like that black trim connecting the Nissan badge to the taillights. Pathfinder in some smoked aluminum trim, shiny chrome platinum badge. Shout out courtesy Nissan of Tampa for helping make this review possible. Rear parking sensing trailer hitch. And this SUV can tow 6,000 pounds. Also an impressive number for the segment. We can get a good look at the exhaust tip. Just a single exhaust tip and speaking of it, let's fire up this 3.5 liter V6 and hear how she sounds. All right, guys, that was the sound of the three and a half liter V6 sold by Nissan for the 2024 Pathfinder. And it sounds okay, making a healthy amount of power at 284 horsepower, 269 pound-feet of torque. Competitive with the segment, made it to a nine-speed auto transmission and front-wheel drive. You can expect zero to 60 if you can get a good launch around high six second range. You see the aluminum stick connecting the two strut towers. That should help the handling quite a bit. Unfortunately, no hydraulic struts. That would be nice on a top platinum trim, but really can't complain all that much. Beautiful styling. I hope you guys can pick it up on camera with the two-tone contrast. I wish we have more black accents, but other than that, you can add that all in the aftermarket. It still looks really good. We get smart access for all four doors, if we didn't mention, taking a step inside. Let's see what we get with a top Pathfinder trim. So we get leather stitching, gushy soft up top, gushy soft leather in the center and for the armrest area. Four window auto one touch, power folding mirrors, four way adjustable lock and unlock, two person memory seats, aluminum door handle and some beautiful wood trim. Solid storage too, you'll fit a foot long with no problem and a big gulp right in front of it. One of your Bose speakers and this Bose sound system sounds really good. 
Guys, this is a super premium looking interior for a sub $50,000 base price point. Quilted centered seats, heated and ventilated, black contrast, white contrast stitching, and I'm loving the tan beige color. It doesn't get nearly as hot as black leather in the summer here in Florida. We get two-way lumbar, recline, drop, lift, and you can slide the seats. We get an aluminum Pathfinder nameplate stepping inside, and we can take a step inside and really check it out. So foot on the brake, engine start, stop, and everything fires right to life. So inside, not much changes compared to the previous models. The steering wheel is decently thick, not the thickest 10 to bolstering notch, but the 9 and 3 still feels really nice in your hands. I like the flat bottom and we get a nice aluminum frame for it. The horn area is hard plastic with good graining. The horn itself, loud and aggressive. People should be definitely getting out of your way. We'll do a window check. We do get dual panes here on the top, platinum trim. That's a nice touch. On the left side, the steering wheel volume and skip controls. You can also adjust the infotainment and go back and forth with the infotainment if you'd like to for one reason or another. So we have settings, we have compass with Sirius to the right of it, drive computer, tire pressure, stop start, speed limit sign recognition. We can go back see what else is available here. We also have advanced safety and our blind spot for collision alert and lane keep assist that you see through a heads up screen. My personal favorite screen to look at at all times would probably just be the drive computer, so we'll leave it there. On the left side, the tack goes to about 64, 6,500 RPM. I'm sorry about the glare there, guys. It got really bad with the sun facing the windshield. But on the right side, we have a digital speedo up top. We have our clock and temperature outside down below fuel level and total mileage on the vehicle. Gas level on the right side, cool temperature on the left. We have a power tilt and telescoping steering wheel too, all really appreciated features. On the right side, we have a cruise control settings, voice commands, hang up and answer your phone calls, and our 360 sense with the radar cruise. The stocks, Really satisfying click, we get auto headlamps, auto high beams, and auto rain sensing wipers. To the left of the steering wheel, we have our interior brightness, air vent controls outlined in some wood trim, more of that tan leather surrounding it. We have our active steering and trunk latch release with our forward collision alert information. Hood latch release in the corner, hopefully you get a good look at the pedals, nice and aggressive. The dashboard is all soft touch materials, nine inch touchscreen and a 12 inch digital gauge display if we didn't mention. This is the home screen for the touchscreen. Hopefully you guys can pick it all up. Sirius XM traffic, sports, weather, fuel prices, stocks, clock, and you can customize the menu. We have phone, info, audio, map connections, and settings. I'll check out the map real quick. Cool. The response, very responsive, just like an iPhone. Nissan's done a great job with their touchscreens. Definitely one of the best when it comes to the Japanese competition. Honda and Toyota haven't really been making the best touchscreens. This is my personal favorite screen to leave it at all times, so we'll leave it here. The volume dial has a really satisfying resistance to it, nice high quality feel, engine start stop, hazards in the center, dual zone automatic climate control up front, and a separate climate control out rear. Heated and ventilated seats on the platinum trim, the gear sled that controls the 9 speed auto transmission, we can check out the backup camera, super high resolution guidance lines, trajectory, and an over the top 360 with front and rear parking sensing. Throwing right back in a park and we return right back to the home screen get leather stitching for your knee will often hit and some additional storage down below hopefully you guys can pick it up on camera really quite a bit of it down there you can throw your phone or wallet or your keys up front in this little storage compartment and we got two cup holders right behind you with a 24 ounce bottles you can turn off the auto engine start stop electron park and brake with auto hold behind it drive mode selector so we get tow mode, sport mode, standard, and eco, and snow mode. We'll start the review off in standard, try out sport, try out eco, and just see what the differences are. Additional spot, nice for a key, pathfinder etched in this center console armrest area, and it's pretty soft, not the softest, but the leather does feel very premium and super spacious. You're fitting six one liter bottles of soda in there with no problem, you can click in a pen and some business cards right up top. The glove box, you got like two tiers. You could throw some actual gloves, car accessories, notepads in the center one, some leather stitching right above it, and the actual glove box itself, it's damp. Not lined with felt, but you'll fit 25 license plates in there with no problem. Maybe two pairs of shoes if you're under a size 10. You don't get a frameless rear view mirror, but it is auto dimming with three garage home link settings on it. Sunglass holder, interior lights do not appear to be LED. Still do the job. We get up. Panoramic moonroof too, the shade takes a little bit long to open, but we'll be patient. Press this button, open it up all the way. And as soon as it opens up, we'll follow it up by opening up the glass and see how far it goes out. So the glass goes underneath the second panel. Pretty impressive, reminds me a lot of the moonroof that we get on the 
tight and it also goes all the way out to the end of the front row we'll poke our way out of here beautiful day today in tampa florida sunny and 77 degrees according to this pathfinder we'll shut the glass right up leave the shade open so when we hop out back you guys can see how much light is brought into the cabin but that's about it for the front seat of this 2024 Nissan Pathfinder Platinum two-wheel drive. So $48,780 base price. You guys can pause, take a look at all the standard features. And remember, this is a top platinum trim, so it comes absolutely loaded. $220 for the splash guards, $850 for this two-tone premium paint, $280 for the carpeted floor mats, bench seats, set of four, $1,335 for the destination, totals us out at $51,465. So considering the luxury and features we get here, outside of all-wheel drive, this is a loaded luxury SUV. At around 50,000 bucks, it is really tough to beat. Efficient too, 23 combined MPGs, 20 in the city, 27 on the highway. You guys can pause, take a look at the rest of the window sticker one more time. Putting this away though, if we didn't mention again, we get Bose speakers here on the Platinum and it sounds really, really good. Taking a step out back, Let's see how much space is offered back there, as well as the overall quality of the materials. So in the center and up top, we get soft leather stitch trim, sunshade, gushy soft armrest, and Auto One Touch out rear as well. Solid storage, you'll fit quite a bit of car accessories, stack some sandwiches on top of each other. You'll fit 24 ounce bottles in these top cup holders too. So it's super kid friendly. We have a little plastic step in plate, so we don't have to get the carpet all covered in dirt. The rear seats are quilted, perforated leather, not quite as bolstered as they are up front but they're still heated and we get a full third zone climate control. I'm a little bit over six feet tall sitting behind my seat settings. And as far as space, we get a ton. I have about seven, eight inches of knee room headroom. I have about an inch, maybe a little bit less because this moonroof does protrude quite a bit. So if you're over six foot two, six foot three, you'll probably want to scoot your butt forward a little bit, compromise some of your knee room. And now I got about an inch, maybe two of headroom. We get map pockets behind both the front seats. We mentioned the full third zone climate, AC outlet, USB-A, and C port. The center cubby, you jab your hand into it and access it. Not the most padding, but you can drop your elbow here, throw your phone, wallet, two cups, or bottles, and they will fit up to 24 ounces. You might notice, where are the air vents? There's nothing in the center console, but the air vents blow directly into your face, just like I like it, perfect location. The interior lights, not LED, but again, they still do the job. The grab handle on this side does not get a hook, doesn't get one on the opposite side either, but we get a couple sets of hooks over here which should do the job and that's on both sides of the back seat windows. That's about it though guys for the back seat, check it out, we have a ton of light brought to the cabin thanks to this massive panoramic moonroof. Let's hop out into the third row real quick, see how much space is offered back there, check out the cargo space and then take this 2024 Pathfinder out for a drive. So very easy process the way the seat lifts up with the seat all the way in its furthest back position. I'm a little bit limited on knee room and by limited my knees are literally in the back seat. So we're gonna have to do something about this. Let's see if we can adjust just how far this back seat goes. So right there, that's perfect. The rear seat passenger still has plenty of knee room and now so do I. I got about an inch, maybe two of knee room. Headroom, I have about an inch of it as well. The third row seats also recline. I can drop them all the way down here now I feel like the king of the castle. I have enough knee room, I have plenty of headroom, and a very nice reclined position. We get charge ports here too, it's a USB-A, two cup holders, you'll fit 24 ounce bottles, additional speaker, and a subwoofer on the opposite side. More speakers too. More cup holders, more charge ports, and some hooks for the cargo, but that's not applicable for the third row seat. Third row seat passengers also get an additional air vent that blows directly into their face. Nice high quality attention to detail. Pressing the button one more time, and it shoots forward. A lot of you guys have questions. If you press the button and someone's sitting there, are they gonna get launched through the windshield? No, it's not quite that strong. It does give a pretty decent amount of shove, but if you weigh more than 20, 30 pounds, it's probably not gonna move you. Hopefully that bug does not get in here. They're gonna yell at me at the dealership if it does. But taking a hop out of here, let's check out the cargo space and take this 2024 Pathfinder Platinum out for a drive. So click of a button, we have an auto opening lift gate and it opens up pretty quickly. Behind the third row seat, we have a decent amount of storage space. You'll probably fit two carry-ons horizontally. You could probably stack three or four on top of each other. Secret storage, we got a ton. You'll fit an additional carry-on, maybe two in here. So I'd recommend removing this entire tray if you plan on keeping third row passengers in here at all times. The seats are completely manual though. You gotta start by dropping the headrest by pulling these latches. A little bit annoying, but 
for the price point, you can't really complain. Now all you gotta do is take the latch, push it forward, do the exact same thing on the opposite side. And here you go. With the third row seats down, this is a very large cargo space. I'll leave a link right here to show you exactly how much space is behind the second row and behind the first row if the second row is folded down and behind the third row if the fold third row was up. The step-in is low. For a mid-size SUV, my knee is only about an inch or two below the step-in. So if you have older or smaller pets, this is a very pet-friendly SUV for you. To drop the tailgate, you simply press this button. You have two choices. You can press this button and the vehicle stays unlocked. Or if you're done, you just want to press the button and have the entire vehicle lock up after you close the trunk. That's the button to press. But we don't need the vehicle locked right now, so we'll just press the first one. The trunk immediately starts to close, so make sure you get out of the way. Or you might get doofed in the head if you don't get out quick enough. But overall, guys, that's about it for the inside and outside of this all new, well, not all new, relatively new 2024 Nissan Pathfinder top of the line Platinum. With this two-tone paint color, this is really one of the best looking SUVs in the sub $50,000 segment. And with the interior features that we saw, this is very considerably maybe the best vehicle for the money under 50,000 bucks. Performance wise, let's take this 2024 Pathfinder Platinum out for a drive and see what it's got. All right, guys, now we're just about seeing everything we need to see with the inside and outside of the 2024 Nissan Pathfinder Platinum. Let's take it out for a drive and see what it's got. My first impressions though, unlike the two other Nissans we just reviewed in this channel, the Frontier and Titan, both the regular Titan and the XD, the steering here is unbelievably light. The feel also just about non-existent, but it's very sharp and direct. Considering the lightness of the steering rack, it's surprising to see that this is significantly more direct than both of the previous vehicles reviewed in this channel, Frontier and Titan. Not surprising considering the size, but considering the initial feel, I actually am surprised at how quick and direct the steering rack actually is. Very light throttle, daily acceleration, nice low end torque. Yeah, we're shifting at about 2000 RPM and you look down and you're already going over the speed limit. Ride quality, very good. It handles the uneven parts of the pavement excellently. You feel the bumps a little bit more than you would with a Titan, but the little bumps don't distract the chassis like they do with a Titan, if you know what I mean. With the Titan, the little bumps, the sl slight changes of pavement kind of rock the truck back and forth, whereas the big bumps in the road, the truck simply just smashes over them without you even feeling that it even happened. That's basically the complete opposite here. The big bumps, you feel a little smack from the wheel as it comes up, but the little bumps, it's like they don't even exist. You barely even hear them as you run them over. The body roll test, we do get a higher rollover warning. So let's see what the body roll looks like. High speed, there is definitely body roll, but it is surprisingly limited. And this turning radius is sharp. Coming out of two full-size trucks, this is significantly better. About half throttle, good mid-range. Once you cross about 4,000, that's when the power really starts to pick up. We'll try out an acceleration off the line. Throw it into sport mode real quick. Off the line once we stop. Cool. And on the gas. Oop, little wheel spin. There we go. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. Yeah, this thing can't fly. You look down and you are moving. And yeah, it rides up the bumps nicely. You don't really feel them more time in sport mode the steering gets a lot heavier in sport a lot more playful feeling through the wheel the chassis stays about the same coming out on the gas oh, all this stuff's flying around <laughs> wow yeah guys this thing can move we don't have to beat it up a whole lot further all my stuff over here is just flying around but hopefully you can pick it up on camera this thing is not bad we can try out these paddles real quick third gear good torque Wow, this feels torquier than the Acura MDX. I wouldn't be surprised if this thing can beat an MDX. Zero to 60. One more time, third gear. Yeah, guys, that's mid-range. That's not even top end. We drop down in the second. Right here. Throwing it in. Woo! Wow, it is a playful, playful chassis. We can open her up a little bit more right here as soon as we get the chance. Looks like we have the chance, but let's let this GMC pass just so you guys can see how quickly this thing gets the speed. On the gas, second gear, top end. Woo, goodbye. Yeah, guys, the performance in this SUV, it's there. It's not gonna blow you away, but compared to like a Acura MDX, 
Infiniti QX60, I mean, to be expected, Infiniti QX60. But compared to the vehicles like that, Cadillac XT6, you are saving a significant amount of money while still just about having just as luxurious and as quick, playful, fun to drive, and good looking SUV as the competition. And considering you're saving 10,000 bucks, I would really recommend just about anybody cross shopping luxury SUVs to check this one out. We'll try a real world turning radius test. One more acceleration, we'll actually throw it into eco mode to wrap things up. Hopefully you picked up the performance. Hold up truck, let me go. Okay, about half throttle. Yeah, a lot less sensitive throttle. But it still feels okay. We'll try it out in full throttle. Yeah, same thing. So I'd actually recommend leaving it in eco mode for daily driving because you'll save some fuel economy and overall the vehicle is just as fast. It just makes the throttle a little bit less sensitive especially for poor weather. I'm sure snow mode does a similar thing to eco mode, but I just leave it in eco mode at all times and just leave it alone. Now at higher speeds, the interior is still super quiet. I don't think it's any louder in the interior than an Acura MDX, especially with these dual pane windows. One more time, we'll throw it in a little quicker than we should. Use these paddle shifters. Ooh, <laughs> good handling on the gas. Oh, little understeer trash control but overall guys this isn't a performance car it does perform very well for an SUV but you don't buy it to be an all-out performer if you want something that's a little bit more performance oriented at the very least get the all-wheel drive model so you can eliminate all that unnecessary wheel spin with hard accelerations at low speed but overall guys at the $48,000 base price $50,000 like after destination charge this is an unbelievable luxury SUV. Some of you guys may not want to get past the whole badge thing with the Nissan versus like luxury brands such as Acura, Infiniti, or Cadillac, but I'm telling you, save your money, save five, six, ten thousand dollars $10,000, go with this Nissan if you're comparing front wheel drive especially versions. The seats are unbelievably comfortable, the interior is quiet, the ride quality is plush, the sound system bumps, and we have just about all the tech possibly want or need no we don't have like one of those 11 12 13 14 inch screens those giant tv monitors that you put in all these new cars but who really needs that we got a 12 inch digital gauge display a 9 inch touchscreen great sound system great ride quality very good performance and looks this thing looks sick if that's what you're looking for guys while averaging almost 25 mpgs i would definitely recommend checking out the all-new 2024 nissan Pathfinder and if you're living in areas that don't see like snow or very heavy rain You'll get away with front-wheel drive But if you want to be a little bit more performance oriented or you drive in more inclement weather I'd recommend paying the extra couple thousand bucks and go for the all-wheel drive But either way this SUV is awesome and a big thanks to Red at Courtesy Nissan in Tampa, Florida for help make this review possible I'll leave a link to your inventory below and if you're looking for a new car SUV or truck in the Tampa area I would definitely recommend checking these guys out and ask for Red and huge thanks to all of you guys for watching. I had a great time making this video. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. If you already subscribed, thank you so much. You guys know the channel is just not possible without you, and I really appreciate the constant support. But again, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Leave a like too. It really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. That's how these videos get promoted to new people. Leave a comment. Let me know what you like. Let me know what you don't like. Leave a comment. Let me know if there's any specific cars, SUVs, or trucks you want to see reviewed on this channel. And I'll definitely try getting those videos for you ASAP. But other than that, again, thank you guys so much for watching. And I hope all of you have a great day.